participant. It's a great pleasure to have you here during a debate on the future, on how we can build the future so that the new generation will feel comfortable. Let me start by presenting our guests. It's a great pleasure to present uh, Irache Garcia Perez. And uh, she deserves all the applause. She is the president of the Socialist and Democrats group at the European Parliament. And then I'd like to welcome Robert Piedroni, a man of uh, great uh, values and merits, a member of the European Parliament. He is here together with his group, and he is also a co-president of Nova Levica, the new left. And he is also the founding father of Vyosna, my favorite political party, and on his right, Veronika Frontrag. And she is a vice president of the new left in Małopolska region. That's a very important role that uh, she is fulfilling uh, with passion. And uh, on my right, Łukasz Michnik, uh, a president of uh, the young new left. And now let me give the floor to Iracza, uh, who will give uh, a speech in Spanish. So, if you haven't, uh, if you haven't uh, taken uh, uh, the headsets yet, now it's the time. Good evening, everyone. So, I'm here in Krakow with you, and I, I wish. I could say a few sentences in Polish, but it wasn't possible this time. So no Polish this time. I'll speak Spanish. We've got our great interpreters. Thanks to them, by the way, for the work they've been doing here in Krakow over the past few days. And. We're going to have a great conversation. And I really want to thank you for being here. For social democrats, it's so important to have this space, to have meetings of this kind. So it's important to talk to you, but also to listen to you. So you're the protagonist today. We've got some ideas to share with you, some questions for you. But for us, this is really about listening. It's about knowing what you think, hearing your concerns and your proposals. Because we have a responsibility as political officials and we need to listen to your ideas and then take your ideas on, on board. So today we want to talk about how we can ensure a real change for young people in Europe for the future generations of the EU. I firmly believe in the power of young people. You can make change. You can change the way things are. Malala was only 17 years old when she was awarded the Nobel Peace Prize for fighting for education for all, including all girls or women. And Greta Thunberg wasn't even 17 when she managed to get millions of young people to take the streets to fight for the environment. Last year at the Cannes Film Festival, the film that won the Grand Prix was about young people and their path towards self-realization. So you as young people can bring new ideas and energy so that we have a better future. But you need to have the right conditions. You need to be in the right position if we're going to make change. So as legislators, experts and activists, we want you to have an environment in which you can learn, socialize and prosper, where you can make the kind of life you want to have in total freedom. And we want to make sure that you have 
all the opportunities to make a better future. Last year was the European Year of Youth and it was an opportunity to hear from young people when making decisions. But we, that can't be enough. It has to be more. We also need to look at the European Youth Strategy. It's really important to hear from young people and youth organizations. We want to hear your proposals. We want to hear your ideas. We have to talk about how we can get young people into jobs on the labor market. Today we have an instrument called the European Guarantee. And we have the European Guarantee, Youth Guarantee, thanks to the S&D family. So it's a tool that helps young people who finish their studies and who want to further develop professionally. And they might not have those opportunities. Um, but this tool is there to help them gain a foothold on the labor market. And there's also the issue of diploma recognition throughout the European Union. Because often we talk about the EU, we talk about the European project, about how Europe is constructed. And often we look at different examples. Perhaps the best example of a Europe without borders is Erasmus. Erasmus is a way to, for people to get to know each other, to exchange, ex to share experiences, and to get to know different realities. We are enriched when we learn about different situations, different realities throughout the European Union. And that's what Europe is all about, an open Europe, a Europe of solidarity. That's the kind of Europe we want and we want to work towards. Unfortunately, though, we're facing the right, the, the conservative right and populists who want to curtail rights. So that's why it's also important to educate people. It's really important that young people realize that what we've achieved can't be taken for granted. There can be backsliding. Rights and opportunities can be lost. But it was, we had to work really hard to gain those rights. We have to protect those rights. But if we're going to protect those rights, we need you. We need you to get organized. We need you to be critical. We need you to raise your voice and say how we're going to build a better Europe. A lot of young people are going, taking to the streets and saying there is no planet B. We need a Europe that fights climate change. We need a green transition that will ensure there's a planet for future generations. Today, look at the Conservatives. Look at the European... Uh, look at the EPP. Look at the European uh, PPP. They, are the, they don't want to fight, for climate, fight against climate change. And we've heard that the EPP is going to try to stop some of the European Commission's new proposals. There's supposed to be a new law on biodiversity. We're not going to s allow them to stop those laws. We, as the left, in the European Parliament, are going to ensure that these initiatives do happen. We're not going to allow the European Popular Party to be reactionists who work with the extreme right because they want to ignore climate change. We're responsible, think, and we're going to think about you. We're not going to lose sight of you and future generations. Don't have any doubt about that. And I'll draw to, draw to an end now. I'll conclude now. As I was saying earlier, it's so important to hear your voice. Democracies are based on societies that are alive, that are critical. We need young people to take to the streets, to take the floor, and who t uh, with young people who tell us what we have to do. So thanks so much for being here. Thank you f to the young people who are being here. Thank you to those who aren't quite as young. We're really looking forward to hearing from you. Thank, thank you for being here. The fact that you're here shows that you're politically committed. It shows that you want to improve your lives. And it shows that you want to make life better for the rest of society. 
So thank you for being here, and I'm really looking forward to hearing from you. Thank you very much. Before we move to the main part of our discussion, which is uh, going to be a kind of brainstorming exercise, I would like to give the floor to Robert, and he will have the honor of asking the first question. And uh, he will ask a um, question to one of the participants. And I guess it's going to be you, Machi. Buenas tardes. I will speak Polish. So first of all, I would like to welcome you here. It's almost 6 p.m., I guess. We have a beautiful sunny afternoon in Krakow, and the room is full. And this definitely gives me a lot of positive energy. After this inspiring speech by Iracha, I thought that this is maybe something that we need. We need some inspiration some positive energy. We need a source of thinking that will keep us up. We are living in difficult times. I have heard about so many problems in Poland and in Europe during the last days. Nevertheless, today we are to talk about a safe future for the generations to come. And I'm very happy to see young faces, but not only young faces here. I can see representatives of different generations. Here. Social Democrats need to think about building a society that leaves nobody behind. We need to know how to build a society of intergenerational dialogue because this world has to be constructed. All of us together. I have gathered so some numbers and some data for today to inspire you. Good news, first of all. Unemployment, youth unemployment is falling uh, in European Union. It used to be 14%, and now, in the first quarter. So in the first quarter of 21, it was 18%, and the average is 6% in the European Union. So you can see uh, that uh, the youth are three times more likely to be unemployed. 13% of youth are neither in employment nor in education. So 13% of our youth it's out of the system. It's out of the job market, out of school. They are in a limbo, in a void. It's nine million of young people that uh, are not within the system. On the other hand, young people want to be an active part of a green transformation, 71% of young Europeans want to be a part. So this is a great challenge for politicians. How do we get those young people engaged? Iracha mentioned uh, Greta Thunberg. But we know what happens when those young people have to face the world that does not understand them that cannot answer their requests. And one in seven people from 10 to 19 suffer from mental disorders. One in seven people. That's, that's a strikingly high number. 
For example, in Portugal, mental health is a growing problem. Over 40% of young people between 18 and 26 in Portugal have to suffer uh, mental diseases. And one third of Finns uh, between 14 and 18 get drunk at least once a month. So what's the source of those problems? So this is just to show you the perspective, uh, to show you where we are today. So let us consider what can we do to, to create a better future. And for example, in Poland, 49% of young Poles live with their parents because they do not have access uh, to housing and to quality jobs that would provide livelihood for them. And so this creates a, a map of Europe to put it this way. In Spain, there are regions uh, where youth unemployment is at 50%. Uh, some places in Poland used to be similar. So what shall we do? Uh, there are spots uh, in Europe, for example, Słupsk, my city, is a city of uh, the senior citizens. All young people want to leave Słupska. When they finish secondary education, they move elsewhere. So depopulation of uh, smaller cities and villages, that's a great challenge. And I believe that solutions, this is what we should be talking about. And I have a totally different question to Iracha from the one that I prepared. I guess that you might be a source of information, in, um, inspiration uh, to many young people as a young leader of the second political force in Europe. That's a great achievement to have the second largest political group at the European Parliament. And you are a young woman. So, what do young people need uh, to, <laughs> to take over after you? So if uh, somebody is dreaming of taking your place, taking your seat, so what do you need to do in your in life uh, to have a real impact? Uh, maybe not as a president, but to be present uh, in the public life. Uh, Well, when we're talking about youth and perhaps young in spirit, uh, age perhaps rather less. But when I started out, I made commitments to my, uh, my neighbors, to young people around me, to uh, youth uh, organizations, political organizations, and I have done since an early age. What's important is to change things and not to think about what's best for yourself, but for others. And that's why people should go into politics. Others see politics in a different way. But for the left, for progressives, for social democrats, we see politics, we have to see politics as the best way to improve people's lives, particularly to improve the lives of those who need it most. Some people don't need politics. Their lives are OK. But those who have more difficult lives need democracy, need institutions to think about them, to work for them. So all I can do is to ask for you to take all of your ideas, all of your um, commitment to do something translate that into acts to work in the political sphere. 
political politics doesn't have to be done in institutions or in, uh, you know, it can be done in your day-to-day -day life. You know, go into the streets and try to do something for other people. But if you want to, to do uh, something in politics, I would ask you to take that step and to make a commitment to, to ensuring that things change. You don't have to uh, be from somewhere else to, to achieve things. I come from, I'm the daughter of uh, very uh, humble parents. Uh, neither they nor me ever thought that uh, I would be the president of the Social Democrats in the European Parliament. Um, neither of us, any of thought that, but I was a girl who wanted to uh, fight for others and to uh, achieve. So that's all you need. All you need is the desire. And, and of course, you need to um, focus on your education, but you want to, you need to have the will and to believe that the actions that you take can, even just a little bit, improve the lives of those who need it most. So maybe I will ask uh, somebody who is uh, protesting in the streets uh, uh, with uh, a lot of experience. So I will ask Veronika Fronczak. What do you expect from the European Union when it comes to the future of uh, women? So these are your representatives. Uh, these are your political friends. Uh, these are your politicians that have a say. What do you expect from them? So the list is long. As young people, uh, we face discrimination in so many areas, uh, at the workplace, uh, in the political domain, at school. It's not easy for young people in Poland in general, and it's even more difficult uh, for young women in Poland. So the total, almost uh, total abortion ban, or let's call it, let's call it an abortion ban, is uh, brutal. We are really backward and when compared to other European countries. Young Polish women are afraid. They are afraid to get pregnant. They are, they are afraid to have sex. They are afraid to take contraception because we know what are the, the effects of um, the side effects of uh, hormonal contraception. Um, and what's interesting, um, hormonal contraception for men does not have so many side effects. So young Polish women are afraid. They are afraid at their workplace when they, where they face uh, uh, discrimination, sexist remarks. Uh, young women are objectified, uh, treated as beautiful young bodies, uh, um, always wearing makeup. Uh, and uh, if we don't wear, wear makeup, uh, we, we, we hear questions uh, whether uh, we are sick uh, or something is wrong with us. Uh, so this is, this is what we are taught when we go to work. We need to look great. We need to look our best. So what I would like to say as a young a woman, that my request for the European Union would be more pressure for legal abortion until 12th week in each and every member state. So I think that this should be a priority for the European Parliament. But not only that, there are many other things uh, for example, uh, menstruation, uh, period leave, this should be a norm, as well as um, access uh, to uh, period hygiene products. And here I would like to praise uh, NGOs in Poland um, that want to uh, implement so-called uh, think boxes. but. Uh, but we have to buy uh, hygienic products ourselves uh, to fill those uh, pink boxes. 
and I believe that uh, Polish women, European un women, should have the same rights, starting with uh, menstruation period leave, um, then uh, uh, cheaper or free menstruation hygiene products uh, and uh, cheaper contraception. But uh, let's not forget men. Maybe we are more discriminated, we are. But it's not so great for men either. Uh, for example, parental leaves that are not equal uh, for men and women. And of course, uh, there are single parents, single fathers as well. Uh, so um, I would also like to mention this uh, separation between male and uh, female professions. So why do female coders, uh, why do female uh, space specialists uh, um, or construction workers are believed to be weirdos or believed uh, not to be feminine or people believe that uh, they must be lesbian and uh, the other way, why? Uh, the other way around. Why, for a man to work as a nurse, uh, it seems strange. Why does it seem strange uh, for a man to be a nursery school teacher, or, or a nail artist? So I think that the European Union should put pressure to gain real gender equality. So once again. Uh, women should have access to health care, to abortion, um, should have access uh, to period leaves. Women should not be obliged to go abroad or to use dangerous methods if they want to terminate their pregnancy. And then equal pay and uh, paternal leaves. And I believe that men should be supported in so-called feminine professions and females should be supported in so-called masculine professions. So as a young woman, I would like to live to see the times when those stupid divisions will not exist anymore, both in political life and in private life. Thank you very much. So Veronica presented a clear list of requests. But now let us move to Wukash. So Wukash, please close your eyes. Just uh, relax. Uh, forget that there are so many people watching you and listening to you, including those online. So just relax and imagine that you are Iracha. And you can take the most salient decisions in Europe. Yeah? You've got a picture? So, what are three most important decisions to take concerning young people? Oh, I, I haven't said that you can open your eyes, not yet. So, three most important decisions, priorities. So, now he's imagining that he is a king. And he's living in the Vavel Castle. Three things. So, uh, I would very much like to be Raj, but I wouldn't like to be living in the Vavel Royal Castle. I wouldn't like to be the king of Europe. I don't think that anyone should really aspire to be the king of Europe. No one should be allowed to be the king of Europe because the time of uh, single person uh, authoritarian regimes has been long consigned to the past and you probably agree with me. And there are plenty of authoritarian tendencies to be seen right now in Europe, be it uh, um, made by Mr. Orban or Mr. Kaczynski who are doing their best to deprive us of our democracies, of our freedoms. And this is very important when I speak about young people because what they stand for is not our world. And 
how come that we have those radical right movements that enjoy support of young people like confederation that we have in Poland? All right, I'll take uh, this question later, but free ideas, free dreams that I have. Yes. We need to be alert to this phenomenon of uh, crystallization of ra radical populist um, uh, right uh, that uh, allures young people, wins their hearts and minds, and we must understand the root causes of a process. It seems to me that the root cause is that young people tend to defy and to mutinize and this is precisely something that uh, the right movement can uh, uh, prey on they have been always very good at pointing who is the guilty culprit women um, uh, immigrants uh, you are not to blame, they are to blame, that you don't have a job, that you uh, don't benefit from Erasmus+. Plus. It is always someone else who is to blame, and this is how they use the anger of young people. They appreciated this anger, impatience that raised in us, so the left should also have this appeal, appeal should target our anger, our impatience to the causes that are right. It should uh, speak about uh, social inequalities that are massive, that are unfair, the injustices that there are in the society. It is only natural that we will mutiny, that we will be angry, that uh, it is not the problem on the part of gays, lesbians, women, migrants, it is elsewhere. So we should really refocus and retarget the anger of young people. So that's why we should not be really losing our ground. And how to translate this anger into three particular activities that you would like to launch if you could? The three things, the three things in Europe, the three problems in Europe that you would like to resolve. In the first place, if we speak about the European platform, I would very much put our stakes on European integration, strengthening of other relations, but done it somewhat differently than it is being delivered right now, especially uh, remembering about social justice. Um, at the beginning, you were mentioning how many young people still live with their parents. And speaking about social justice, we need to try to address this problem that is pan-European problem, the housing crisis. Let's put in place very solid regulations that will make housing, affordable housing, attractive to investors so that investors uh, do not only resort to capital markets. So housing is n like your dignified um, uh, right and not just a commodity. So point one and point two, European army. Well, interesting, because this is traditionally something that the right wants to have. Yes, indeed, but if we think about our anxieties, about our fears of the young generation, we look what is happening beyond our eastern border. And myself, a young person of left persuasion, speaking about the military, well, many of us volunteered uh, uh, at train stations where the Ukrainian war in Ukraine broke out. Myself, my girlfriend, we were volunteers uh, at the train stations and we were really crushed by what we have seen because our European values, our liberal democracy is not universally understandable and justifiable. This is our excellent practice, but something that we need to defend. And why is it army? Why is it European army? Why should we be fighting for this with our European army and not with national armies? I'm not implying that I'm in disagreement with you because there will be a debate, but why have you mentioned the European army? Well, this is a natural step towards federalization. A European army will close the gap 
uh, and uh, remove any room for conflict between European countries. Because if we are part of one military bloc, we will never be against one, uh, one each other. Uh, and um, the third point is climate. We know that uh, nowadays the European Union has invested lots of efforts to protect climate and the level of awareness of European decision makers is very high. But bearing this uh, in mind, we must remember that climate is part of the future, future for my generation, so we should really face down coal-based economy, green transition, green energy, democratic uh, energy generation, energy cooperatives, uh, social um, uh, access to energy generation. All right, let's have a brainstorming session now. So this will be our way to channel and democratize uh, um, energy generation. Both uh, Veronika and Łukasz must have been very inspirational and provocative to you. And now I'm looking forward to have your feedback. Please, please uh, um, signalize when you want to speak and we will approach you with microphones. Uh, who is the first willing to take the floor, please? It is great pleasure to be here and to talk and to speak out my mind. In addition to what Veronika has been saying, I just want to say that uh, what she said was uh, very valid. I'm a woman myself. I suffer from discrimination in many walks of life, inequality between women and men, gender gap uh, and payment gap, payment gap. Uh, our salaries are several percent, a dozen or more percent lower, even if we occupy the same post. So we are subject to discrimination. Why myself, being a woman, working in the same position, should be remunerated less? Is it because I'm a woman? And Łukasz should... Ale jeśli można, jeśli można, to się tutaj dołączę, ponieważ sądzę, że to jest... I was saying okay, you're okay, I can do it in, in English. It's so important what uh, you are trying to explain because it's a, a clear uh, situation in the European Union, really, women receive less salary than men for the same work. It's not uh, something like uh, that uh, we say because uh, we want to, to say this. No, it's a, it's a reality. And uh, during this term, we as a social democrat in the European Parliament ask for a transparency directive. Because it's necessary to have a clear what is happening in the labor market. And the enterprise needs to be very transparent and needs to explain it's, I think that it's necessary to prevent this type of uh, situation because it's uh, totally unfair what is uh, happening. We are better uh, trained, we have uh, more, but sometimes, a lot of times, we are receiving less salary. And this directive will be a reality for us, for the Social Democrats. During this term, the Commissioner Elena Dali from our political family present this proposal as a directive and today we are working on it uh, in the parliament uh, to have uh, this uh, this tool to, to do it's uh, finished yes, yes, ah yes it's yes, finished yes. but uh, yes. the trilogue the trilogue is still in the process okay then it's a reality <laughs> no okay it's, it's yeah, yeah now we need implementation yeah. in the member states yeah. Yeah. veronica wants to add something to this veronica so if I may speak Polish, I just wanted to add one thing. What you said is uh, very important. So in your free time, please uh, check uh, uh, the difference uh, in the remuneration between female and male, male footballers. 
soccer players. So in our society, it's still believed that uh, uh, it's a male sport and uh, some women teams uh, have much more success than, uh, than male teams. So we are still discriminated in sports. So a great round of applause for Veronica. We have Enrique with us. Enrique, not Iglesias, who is a leader of the young socialist movement. So Enrique, you are listening up to this conversation. And what you hear, is it an echo of what is said all over Europe? Or have you heard something interesting, something shocking, surprising, or can you see clear European trends? So what's your opinion, my dear Enrique? So thank you very much for giving me the floor. The truth is that a lot of the stuff I'm hearing today, a lot of what you're saying that affects young people in Poland is the same across Europe. Lack of housing, lack of free public education. Then there's the transition from education to the labor market. It's the same across Europe. I was surprised in a positive way about what you were saying about the need for a European army. And we as progressives need to work on that too. Security and defense policy shouldn't just be a right-wing issue. We should also have our own vision for security, defense, and peace. And when we talk about securing a progressive future for the next generation, it's about having a future. We've only got one planet we can live on. We need to have a democracy that allows freedom. If you're a woman, you shouldn't be discriminated against. If you're from the LGBTQ um, community, no one should deny you a job or attack you in the street. So we want to have a planet and a democracy where our rights are fully fledged. So that means having access to education, jobs, and we as the Euro young European socialists have done a lot. Alicia Homs is our leader, the leader of the Young Socialists. Alas, she can't be here. But what we need to get rid of are unpaid internships. Unpaid internships are a scandal. How can they continue in Europe? There are some uh, political parties that allow these unpaid internships to happen. It's wrong. We have uh, really good um, allies. Uh, Robert and uh, Irache are doing a lot. So we want to continue and you can continue to depend on our support. Thank you very much. So do you have any more comments or questions? And what about an army? Let's, uh, let's see who thinks uh, that Enrique's and Wukash's idea to build a European army is a good idea. Who is for it? Raise your hands. Not everybody. Who thinks that this is a bad idea? Raise your hand. Sir. So somebody in the back thinks it's a bad idea. Why do you think it's a bad idea? OK, I'll go to get this person. Where are you? So why is it a bad idea? I think that uh, this is not likely to happen uh, because uh, in case of a danger, um, national interest will over w will always uh, prevail over general interest, so it will be difficult to deploy uh, such an army. So, and if we have a German general, I think that the Poles are afraid of it. Uh, when there was research on the common European army, um, <coughs> the mo the most common question was who was going to be the general, and if. Uh, if, if they said uh, a German general, no, everybody was against. No, it's a, it's a all about organizational issues. We have been discussing this idea for a long time. Um, for example, Bundeswehr is not a, in a great shape. So uh, we have a danger now, a threat now, 
and we don't know the time perspective of um, of the army project so um, what do you think you are a young person so what do you think that should be a priority if we want to secure progressive future for the new generation i think housing and uh, stability in the job market housing so who thinks that housing should be a priority when it comes to youth policy in the European Union? So the European Union should place a priority on access to low rental housing. Okay, raise your hand. And who is against? That's interesting. So I guess that we, we should uh, start building uh, those uh, buildings. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, so when it comes to the European army, I have I have so I have some doubts. Uh, oh, this is uh, this is done. This idea is already dead. Uh, the man in the back has already done it. Uh, so when it comes to uh, other topics, uh, uh, climate, uh, we need to reduce the use of planes. Uh, so we need to develop uh, European rails. Uh, here we have problems. For example, I wanted to go to Erfurt in Germany for the weekend, and it turned out that I can't buy the ticket from Poland. Poland and Germany are neighbors, and there's no single unified ticket sales system for European rails. So this is uh, how we protect uh, the youth against the demoralization. You don't follow the public media. I can see clearly. So I believe that we need a single ticket sales system for Schengen and the whole of Europe. And then we need uh, subsidized international connections. Uh, and the EU, an institution of the EU, should be behind it. And then we need a lower taxation uh, on uh, rails, uh, railway connections. Uh, per kilometer. Uh, you know, I'm not I'm not a great expert, but I think that this is something that we should be working on. So public transport, that's a very important voice. I guess that I, I, I have never flown using public money. I don't do it because it's bad for the planet. Okay, there is uh, uh, somebody here uh, who believes uh, that public Transport is a good idea, but somebody uh, who was against uh, public housing in Europe. Uh, not completely. You used the word priority. And for me, that's key. So that's not a priority for me. It doesn't have to be a priority. And then I'm always afraid of uh, too much state. Uh, too much uh, uh, public institutions uh, involvement in the market and um, in social life. So who should regulate uh, the housing market? Uh, maybe, uh, you know, I'm not, uh, I'm not a member of, uh, of a target group here, but it's, it's all about having conversation, right? Uh, so I like uh, when the life goes on uh, just naturally and markets regulate themselves. I have a small business, not a big one. And I think that uh, if I didn't have so much administrative burden, so many duties, my business uh, would be going much better. Of course, I would have some problems, uh, but definitely less. Uh, because there's too much uh, state in involvement. So the state, when it takes responsibility for housing, it's too much, and the free market should do it, to put it in a nutshell. <laughs> uh, it's, a, it's a simplification. It's too much. This is not how I understand it. And Iracha, so what's your take on it? You know, this is an important debate, but no, there is translation. There is translation. 
Do you speak Spanish? Oh, good, good. You understand me perfectly. Fabulous. This is an open space for dialogue, for listening. We don't just listen to people who share the same views. Others do that, but we're happy to listen to everyone. We listen to those who agree with us and who disagree. I agree with part of what you're saying. As a businesswoman, you've got a company, and you might think there's too much to bureaucracy. I get that. I and we in the parliament get that. We've tried to change the rules on cohesion policy, for example, so that there's less bureaucracy, so that it's easier to access funds. But we always, we always try to find a balance because we need to ensure that the money is used well to achieve the goals they're supposed to achieve. So I agree. There's a lot of potential for improvement. But then there's this issue of the free market. That's an ideological issue. And as you can understand, we as socialists think that the markets need to be regulated so that there's equality of opportunity. Because unfortunately, in this world, we're not all born with the same opportunities. So if you always allow the strongest to dominate, we know who, who wins out. So we want a market economy, but there have to be rules which underpin the market economy so that there's equality of opportunity. Some people need support. It's due to their social, personal, and family circumstances. The thing is, we don't all have the same opportunities. And it's not just about skills. There are some men and women who are just as skilled as each other. There are some children who are really gifted. But then it's due to where you're born. If you were born on the wrong side of the tracks, you might never get the same opportunities. And that's why there is a need for some regulation. But let me stress that I'm really enjoying this debate. Thank you very much. Now, I would like uh, Veronica to comment uh, on uh, the housing issue because uh, uh, one of the hottest debates uh, in Poland. Uh, so I would like you to comment uh, on uh, what's been said. Uh, right, uh, so uh, quickly on housing because then I would like to comment uh, on trains. So uh, housing is a right, not a commodity. So that's a slogan that we all know and use. Young people need to be supported in the housing market. We need low rents, not because we are lazy or we just uh, want to have uh, an easy life. No, it's just more difficult for us, just like Iracha said. We do not always come from family, families that can buy us a flat or we will not get money from our parents uh, uh, to pay uh, for rents. I study at university. I'm a first year student. And uh, uh, the rents have gone up 60% since, uh, uh, since January. And my friends study full time they work in the free time and their parents have to help them financially so that they can pay their rent. So I'm definitely supporting uh, the creation of social housing. So when it comes to uh, trains, uh, I would say that uh, internal uh, domestic uh, flights should be banned if we want to use emissions uh, for flying, please use it internationally, but really let's not fly from Gdańsk to Krakow. So no to domestic flights. We have somebody here who is uh, commenting under her nose. Uh, what's going on here? 
So I'm very interested. Uh, uh, what are we talking about here? Bans on flights. Uh, they want some pink boxes, uh, cheap, uh, um, cheap apartments. They are right, and simply they are right. So do you think that uh, um, other generations uh, understand this new generation? I guess yes. Uh, those who understand, understand, and others don't. Uh, so why why don't other generations do something to change their reality? So why do those young people have to manifest protest in the streets? But I also go and protest in the streets. I confirm. So why those problems have not been solved? Why? Zenek, uh, help me. I don't know. There is no simple answer. If we, if if there were any simple answers, we wouldn't be meeting here. We would be just strolling around uh, the market square. Uh, we need to be careful about the flights, uh, or the right-wing parties uh, <laughs> will will be very happy about it. They will be criticizing uh, the plain ideas, just like the worms. Okay, so over to this side. What's your name? Okay, let me hold the mic. Oh, you will not be seen if you are standing there in the snook. Okay, I want everybody to see you. We have forgotten one thing. For everybody to have equal chances, we have to take something away from somebody. For example, there are flights between Katowice and Krakow, 160 flights. But we have uh, an international public here, and probably my friend Margarida is uh, wondering how many thousands kilometers. So between those uh, airports, uh, it's only 130 kilometers, 130, and those who have their own planes uh, fly between one and another. It's absurd. No, it's capitalism. And uh, one of uh, our members of audience say that uh, the free market uh, should regulate it. If people demand it, they should have it. If somebody wants to fly 130 kilometers. Uh. But Keynes, uh, Galbraith, uh, they also believed that the free market can solve all the problems, but people do not live that long. They want live to see it. I would like to congratulate the Euro European Parliament uh, for some of their um, initiatives. Uh, for example, the Transparency Act uh, on salaries. Uh, of course, uh, the Polish government is against it because they don't want to be transparent then a limitation or a ban on flights over 500 kilometers. And we need to remember that um, airlines are subsidized. And then a single European tax on companies and corporations. That's a very important initiative because we have the tax havens in uh, um, in Europe uh, and some countries that pretend that they are not uh, uh, tax havens, but there are, for example, Czech Republic uh, and uh, let us uh, not forget about the Luxembourg and Ireland. Uh, I believe that socialists and democrats should take away privileges because that's the way to have equality. And how will it change the situation. If nobody is privileged, everybody will have the same good situation. And in practice, if um, everybody <laughs> has the same rights and opportunities, uh, happiness and socialism will reign. And um, a few comments from the young generation. 
Right, I would like to talk about uh, housing and transport. Uh, when we speak about affordable rent houses, uh, we have um, such a banal example of Vienna. And when you were speaking um, the self-regulation by the market, well, I would like to shed light on a broader perspective because not always do we see and realize that it doesn't matter what is at stake, be it housing, transportation, fuels, the money, if it's not spent on one purpose, will be spent on other purpose by consumers. And if um, someone is spending lots of money on the financing of banks and funds, uh, less money will be spent for your potential clients. I don't know in what uh, business you are. Uh, but this is as much true for the housing market. And uh, let me just, off the top of my mind, say that we had 100,000 uh, new flats built um, uh, in uh, Krakow. And they are really low rent apartments and they affect the whole of the market, the uh, rent market um, uh, in Krakow. And very much the same about transportation, rail transportation. We are not well connected. If we need to travel to smaller towns, you need to spend a lot of money. And if you pay for transportation, you will not uh, um, spend it elsewhere. 14 million people do not have enough of money for public transportation. Well, we have all gents and boys uh, asking for the floor. So you've been waiting for such a long time. Uh, yes, let's pass the mic to him. But we have women here. Just to vote. Hanka Toch. Hanka Toj, I'm sorry, Hanya, my dear friend, but I'm just calling you by name. Hanka Toj, during our most recent debate yesterday on the situation of women and what is happening about women's rights. As you are listening to Veronika, were you a part of what she was saying does it really sound familiar to you? Because you have such vast experience to know this uh, community inside out here in Krakow and in Poland, you are a renowned expert. Yes, yes, but I have very gloomy experience. And uh, about um, some heavy handed events such as rapes, uh, such as violence, uh, mutilation, and a lot of work that needs to be done, a lot of work to be done to provide security and safety from the most extreme forms of violence. So not so much uh, about the ban of domestic flights, but rather day-to-day -day effort for the benefit of victims of violence. Day in, day out in Poland, women are sentenced because they failed to rescue their kid, their baby, their child. And even if the partner was extremely violent and was the guilty culprit, culprit, it was woman who was sentenced to jail. Day in, day out, we see such examples. So I think that rule of law is absolutely the must, the foundation. Without rule of law, we have nothing. We are in a void. We may like it or lump it, but if there is any money coming over to Poland, it will be stolen if we don't have rule of law. So we really have respect of law. We need to rescue the honest lawyers whom we still have and who are persecuted. This is something that is on my mind. I'm very happy that uh, we have such a new brave world emerging between our own eyes, that young people have such just ideas. Of course, um, we would like to have justice, but how come, how come 
we see like a hurricane that monies are sucked in by the huge capital inequalities uh, grow and are exacerbated in a moment we will have armies of robots and then it will be the end of it whoever is in power and rich will get rid of everyone else who is not needed so i have such a gloomy vision of the world and if i may say something from my perspective of a woman who is 78 years old well we should have some equitable rights for people of 78 including the right to euthanasia something that there is no in poland i forgot the name of this author of a very interesting uh, 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 thing uh, that he would like to die the dog's death because dogs are offered euthanasia and uh, we men are not allowed to have a euthanasia so this is another demand i put forward thank you hanka another uh, Fred, robots or something else? No, not robots, not robots, but a very tangible uh, problem of young people, the labor market. This has not yet been mentioned, but it deserves our m attention. Uh, for three, uh, in three months time, I graduate. I will graduate. Uh, I'm just doing part-time job in the catering industry. But I know that in three months, uh, uh, time, I people will ask me about my job experience in my own profession, and it is so painful because we, the young people, are confronted with such skyrocketing expectations on the part of our employers, and there is no way for us to gain such a professional experience. We need to do part-time job. We need to be jobbing in catering industry or um, in fashion outlets, which is quite difficult. It is not so that there are no young people who have better jobs, but there is just a handful of them. And my question is how we can improve the potential of young people, opportunities for them, so that they can have jobs that will improve their uh, experience and their uh, chances on the labor market. Well, thank you very much. We are slowly coming to the end, so I do suggest that this boy and this professor will determine who is going to be our last speaker, and then we will hand it over to Veronika, Iracza, and Łukasz to have a wrap-up of our discussion. My, what's your name? Bartek. Bartek. So Barteks are not uh, allowed to have the floor. No. no, it's just a joke. A question to our panelists today. All too often do I hear an opinion that the left has lost the electorate among young men. And I know that this topic is not very popular because we are so much concerned about women's rights, especially young women's rights that are so violated in Poland. But would the left uh, would like to do something to attract young men in this country who are so allured by the right and to have a beer with some rightist politician while not sacrificing fight for women's rights? So this is a way of provocation because I can see that professor is uh, really thinking how to attract those men, how to... This is not a provocation. I'm really genuinely interested. Do you have any idea? No, no, I don't have any idea of my own. Well, if not, thank you. Professor, professor, let me hand it over to you. There is a lady in the red here. Yes, but w it's really going to be the last question. I'm so sorry. Next time when Iracza comes over to Poland, uh, you will need to repeat your questions. You need to store them in your, mi your, in your minds. <laughs> Look what kind of emotions. Well, this is not about young men because I don't know how to encourage them. But just to capitalize on what uh, the previous uh, colleagues said about job situation and our situation on the labor market. I think that uh, 
we should really enforce uh, safety at work institutions because even if we are now trying to report any irregularities um, uh, at work, they are never detected and never um, uh, 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 stigmatized by the labor inspection. And for instance, in my own profession, I heard that women will not be uh, promoted because they are going to get pregnant so soon. And for instance, that people with any disabilities will not be employable because they cannot be employed to work over weekends. And uh, if there are so many irregularities at work, and uh, I took down the notes and I as applied to the labor inspection, and there was not yet any response given, this pathology is exasper as exacerbated and is gaining momentum. There are certain tools available to us, but they are not yet fully functional. And this would be so helpful to young people, to women, to all people on the labor market who feel that their employers try to win over them. <laughs> young women, and people who have uh, confirmed status of disability suffer. And I think that the labor inspection should do the job of oversight um, genuinely. Well, we will come back to the... So young men, vote for the left, and then you will be labor inspectors, powerful. And so the trick of Professor Gdula has done the job because before we met, Professor Gdula told me, well, before we meet, I will try to provoke everyone and the room will be buzzing with ideas. And this is really what is happening. And now we have a grand finale. Łukasz, Irac and Veronika will summarize the discussion and will respond to all your queries questions, problems, and we'll take your questions. So who wishes to be speaking first? Yes, the European Union is there, the European Federation. When will we have European Federation in place, whatever he means? This is yet another intellectual provocation, but we will not succumb to this provocation. Who wants to start? Łukasz. So I guess that uh, three questions uh, on the labor market have not been answered. So, uh, Ms. Scheringer, please behave yourself. Okay, uh, so the priority from uh, the audience uh, was clearly a labor office. So why is it that uh, young people work uh, in catering, uh, uh, work uh, for Uber, they, they have really those precarious uh, jobs. And why don't they have uh, job places um, linked uh, to their um, education? So uh, uh, we need uh, an internship. We need uh, some uh, uh, practical experience, uh, and it's for free. Internship, uh, I worked for five zloty, which is more or less one euro uh, per hour. So how are you supposed to choose a free or really badly paid internship if the prices are going up and you need to support yourself? So how can we push young people to have a real job in a, uh, within their domain? So there should be a ban on free internship and uh, free uh, job practices, so-called. Uh, we are very happy that uh, there was a, <coughs> a resolution of the European Parliament on uh, free internships, so let's do that. Let's see what happens. And there was another question. Um, about uh, labor inspection. Uh, that's my hobby horse. Um, I'm uh, in constant cooperation and contact uh, with uh, the labor inspection and I'm 
And I'm uh, really underwhelmed by what they do. I'm disappointed. <coughs> because uh, I don't know if you know, but labor inspection should be allowed uh, to uh, make a precarious job contract, real job contract. Let's make it a real powerful institution. Let's make it work. Because uh, so far, it's just not working. Uh, uh, okay, I will succumb to a provocation and answer the question about the far right party Confederacja, Confederation. It's all about uh, elec election campaign and tactics because we know that they are not right. Um, they really tap into the anger. The, the anger of young people. They want to create space uh, uh, for rebellion, for expression of anger. Um, it doesn't always have to be nice. Young people need to have an opportunity to express their anger. And we, we need people, young people, to become young leaders of the left. And uh, there is definitely an issue with that. Okay, so that has been a very uh, long comment. And over to Veronica. So briefly, a few things. I agree with everything that Lukasz said. So I fully agree when it comes to labor inspection, uh, which, is, uh, which is not effective. And very often people don't even inform uh, the labor inspection. And then people with disabilities. I know people with uh, disabilities uh, in Krakow um, who found three, four offers, three, four workplaces that were really available and accessible for a person in a wheelchair. So it's very important. And now a bit of criticism, but uh, let's not uh, um, Let's not be shy and uh, uh, let's call some, let's don't uh, call some workplaces normal and not normal because uh, working in a catering is a dignified and difficult job. It's needed. And uh, a right to euthanasia is a human right. It should be discussed. We might be too early. It might be too early for us. Uh, um, as a society to discuss it, but uh, the situation was uh, similar for abortion, and this has changed. And when it comes to uh, men in Confederacja, um, I believe that uh, young people need to stand out. There is uh, there's, uh, a whole cocktail of uh, uh, hormones that uh, play out. Uh, for example, uh, the left is not niche anymore. People in uh, this right-wing uh, Confederacja party mm, are not so numerous. So it's something uh, special, uh, something that uh, lets young people to stand out. So let's just show young men that they can be emotional, that they can be nice, they can be empathetic. There's, uh, there's nothing feminine about it. It's human. So a great round of applause uh, for Wukash and for Veronica. So great. And the cherry on top, uh, our leader, Iracha, you have been listening up on the debate. Uh, we have heard that uh, problems of the youth are quite similar all over Europe. So what did you hear during this debate? Well, we've heard from uh, youth in Europe about how they can get uh, access to the labor market after uh, they finish their studies. Of course, they're going to talk about 
working conditions which are not uh, the dignified working conditions that they deserve. How is it possible that we could imagine young people wouldn't talk about the fact that they want to be independent of their pa from their parents, um, to live uh, comfortably like their parents did 35 years ago? This is something that's happening across the European Union about having proper housing, that this shouldn't be considered a luxury. Of course, young people in Europe think that we need to make progress towards a society that's uh, trying to solve all of these issues. Of course, this is what they want to hear. We've come here to listen to what you think, and, w and we have listened. Are there three topics that seem to come out uh, on a recurring basis? One, um, uh, 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 quality jobs, uh, accommodation, and the climate. And these are all topics that we're working on on a daily basis in the European Parliament. I don't want to get into a speech now about what kind of competences the European Union does or doesn't have. We have to take responsibility. If we hear you say that you know, the European Union should be doing this, um, I shouldn't be saying it's in the hands of the EU or national member states or local authorities. We all have shared responsibilities and it's all linked to um, what uh, the colleague, our friend said at the end, when are we going to achieve a federal Europe? This is a dream for many of us to have um, a space where we can talk about all of these issues where the responsibility is shared amongst everyone. This is our struggle. This is the work that we have to do. However, perhaps now isn't the best time for that. When you see that there are national governments who are trying to um, backslide on the European project rather than strengthening it. And we as European left have to um, redouble our efforts here. You know, the world is moving faster. We have to, you know, we can't say that um, we, there's no time to explain anything. European, Europe is moving forward. What we can't do is the left is um, not explain to people, not teach people. We have to explain to citizens why we need more Europe. We have to explain to young men why we on the left want equal opportunities for men and women. You were saying, what can the left offer to young men? Well, the same as we offer to women, equal opportunities, equal rights, and that they can achieve what they wish in their lives. The problem at the moment is that the right and the extreme right are telling you that you have to choose that if we're supporting women's rights, then we're not supporting men's rights. But on the left, we say that you don't have to choose between one or the other. We want an equalitarian society in order to make progress. The feminist struggle is not just for women. It's for men and women. Uh, young and old men and women. We don't want women to live better than men. We want women to have the same opportunities, the same rights, the same possibilities as men. We want men and women on the left to take a commitment to do things differently. So when a young person uh, says to you, oh, what can we do on the left? Uh, what we say to a young man is that you don't have to choose um, young people men and women will have the same opportunities, uh, more solidarity, uh, more feminist, uh, more egalitarian, and we want you all to take part in that. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Iracha. Thank you, Robert, uh, Veronica, Lukasz. Uh, I'd like to thank all of you who have participated. This has been a great debate that has shown that there is a great need and willingness uh, for change. Uh, no matter how uh, the right wing wants to stop us, we won't be stopped. Uh, so I believe that those voices that want to change uh, the world, the reality, will be heard. Uh, the debate is 
over today, but the debate will be going on, on and I hope will prevail. Thank you very much. We just want to say that the gentleman on the left, these things, it's very important that they don't leave the, the, the place. This is the first announcement. And I would like to invite you. We have some food and some drinks for you. So please be our guests and stay with us because the debate continues now one to one.